Hi, welcome to the part two of this video series where we will look at real exam questions. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is pretty high. Please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up if you like my videos. It keeps me motivated to put some more contents on cloud certifications. For questions one to six, please refer part one of this video series. Let's start with question seven. So this question is talking about hooks. Okay. So these are these are hooks. So first we have to understand why do we use hooks. Hooks are used because suppose you are deploying your EC2 instance and you want you are using AWS cloud formation and you want to control what happens after the EC2 instance has been created. For example, you want to install a particular application, maybe Salesforce, CRM, and so on. So that is how you use hooks and there is a life cycle of the hooks. So this is used very closely with code deploy. So if you see this code deploy, it is the hooks are used with this to automate the deployment process. Now out of these, the question is asking what is the run order? The run order is always, so this is the run order, okay? And there is no logic to it. We are assuming without a classic load balancer because with classic load balancer, the run order is different. We do not use classic load balancer nowadays. It is obsolete and hence this run order suffices without a classic load balancer. This is what will work for us. And these are the steps. You have to first stop the application, download the bundle before install, install after install. You start the application and then you validate the service. Okay. So if we see the run order based on that, option B is the right answer. Let's look at the next question. See, this question is on access key. This is the question. See, what is access key? Access key is used on a temporary basis. We never create an access key for permanent access. Okay, that is point number one. So suppose you have a program, maybe AWS SDK or using AWS CLI and you want to automatically sign in into an application or AWS service. So you can create access key which is associated with your IAM role. Now in this case, we have to select two answers. See the first one, it is this is wrong because you should not use the same access keys because it increases the chances of hacking. See, the best practice is that you should disable or delete all the access keys for the account user. Hence, this option B is correct. Remember this thumb rule. You should not have any access keys defined at the account root user level. Okay, so this is the best practice. And since the question is asking about the best practice, B suffices. C talks about leave unused access keys in the account. This is again a strict no-no. This is a no-no because if you leave the unused access keys for a long time from a security standpoint, it is vulnerable. Hackers can come in and get access to your system using these unaccessed keys, unused keys. Option D, it suggests embed and encrypt access keys in the code for continuous deployment. You never put access keys, you never put credentials, you never put username and password inside your code. That is a strict no-no. That is against the best practice. So this leaves us with the last option E, which hence we have to select option like two options, two answers. So E looks correct. So what E is saying is you use IAM roles instead of access key. Yes, this is the best practice. We should try to use the roles instead of access keys. That is what AWS recommends. Hence, these are our two final answers. Let's look at question nine. This is a question on ECS. And what it is talking about is where we can define port mapping. So remember as a thumb rule, port mapping in ECS world is always defined at a task definition level. It is not defined at a security group level. When we are talking about the security groups, what do we define here? We define inbound and outbound rules. We define SSH rules, like which 
uh, port numbers you want to obstruct, which port numbers you want to allow. Those are the kind of rules you define. You never do a port mapping in the security group. So A is wrong. B talks about container registry. If you have a container and you want to go ahead with the automated deployment, you register that in the container registry. It will not help you with the port mapping. So this is wrong. Container agent. So container agent, why it is used is it helps the container instances to talk to the container clusters. Its purpose is not port mapping. So this is the final answer. Now well, let's look at question number 10. So here we are talking about what are the requirements for configuring container instances in Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, we are talking about a Docker environment. So what are the requirements here? So the first thing that I can think of is you have to create a task definition. So this is definitely a requirement. Okay. So the remaining are not so much relevant in this context. So we will go ahead with this answer. Let's look at the next question. It is talking about, so this is the question. It is talking about your AWS services must be accessed and API calls must be made by the application running on EC2 instances. So for example, your application is residing on this EC2 instance, okay, on this EC2 instance. And you want to make API calls to different AWS services. It may be Lambda, it may be RDS or whatever you want to make that. Okay, so how? So what is the safest approach? We are talking about safest approach to grant access to these services with least amount of administration overhead. Okay, this is very important, least amount of administration overhead. So let's scan through the options. Option A is talking about using AWS KMS. That's crap. Because why do we use KMS to save keys? When do we save keys? When there is a requirement of encryption. There is no requirement of encryption in this question. Hence, A is wrong. Let's look at B. B is talking about EC2 instance profiles. Yes, that is the best practice. What happens is when you create an IAM role and that is associated with your EC2 instance, our uh, instance profile is created with the same name as the IAM role and EC2 instance accesses any services using that role. So this is correct. This is as per the best practice. Option C suggests use AWS root user whenever you see options where they are saying we will directly provide access to the AWS root user. That is wrong. Okay. Suppose you created an AWS account that is your root user in the AWS management console that root user you never provide access to applications through the root user you always use iam roles option d suggests store and retrieve credentials from aws code commit code commit is a version control tool for repositories like github and etc it is a version control tool and you never store any credentials in any code in any application that is straight away wrong you always use iam roles profiles to provide that access so d is wrong we will lock this answer and move forward now let's look at this question this is a dynamo db question okay so now we are talking about a dynamo db it it is used by an application which is deployed on ec2 instance so your application is sitting on this ec2 instance on this ec2 instance and it is trying to access and hit or write that data in this dynamo tv this is the requirement and what is the pain point now the pain point is when the application is doing writes to the dynamo tv tables it is making provision throughput exceed exception error we already know why this error occurs because in the network if there are some problems sometimes the limit gets exceeded you get this error so how to solve this the question is asking you to solve or prevent this error first option is modify the application code to perform exponential back off yes see there are always two things first is use sdk and exponential back off sdk what it ensures is it will do retries frequent retries 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 so that if it fails now maybe after 30 milliseconds 50 milliseconds it will pass exponential back off is it will not do a retry after one or two milliseconds but it will wait for 30 or 50 or 100 milliseconds before it makes a retry because if you make a retry in three milliseconds or five milliseconds chances are that the network glitch in that moment has not been resolved 
so you will still get an error so exponential back off is correct it is the right option option b it suggests modify the application to use aws sdk for dynamo db this is also right because sdk by default you can use sdk and you can plug retries there sdk has an option of retrying multiple retries so that is correct c talks about increase the read and write throughput of dynamo table that will not help you increasing the read and write throughput because the problem is happening only in read not in write so d uh, c is wrong d is talking about using dax c dax always helps you if you are uh, reading dax is a cache on sitting on top of dynamo db so where does dax sit is in between this here you will have dax and the main purpose is if you are creating reports out of dynamo db of your firing queries which is only reads and reads similar data then instead of hitting the dynamo db table every time it will hit the cache and get the data that is the purpose of dax the dax will not solve this problem and the last option suggest create a second dynamo db table and split the reads and writes between two tables this will not help you because the problem that provision throughput occurs is because of some network glitches it does not happen because there is a contention happening at the dynamo db table side it does not happen because of that so e is also wrong we will lock these two answers and move forward see the next question it is talking about account level trace data okay so when we are talking about account level trace data always remember it the answer should be x ray okay because that is a tool which is used to trace the problem statement says that your application components you are a big firm your application components are scattered across different aws accounts now you want the organization to gather and display account level trace data what is happening so for trace purposes x ray is the tool the elastic search it is used to perform search across the logs vpc flow logs so vpc flow logs is used to log uh, ips the network ips so c is wrong and elastic search like i explained is used for search features across the logs etc and cloud watch is used for uh, monitoring the applications or monitoring the aws services so that's why cloud watch is also wrong so x ray is the right option right answer let's move forward this is a question linked with aws lambda what are the best practices for using bespoke libraries bespoke means custom libraries you create something on your own and you want to use it the best way to use such things is always function runtime this is the best way this is the thumb rule rest option doesn't work because it's saying host the library on s3 you would do that only if there are certain standard libraries that you want to use not for custom libraries so a is wrong and b says install the library locally so when you are using lambda you do not do any local installations on prem etc everything is on cloud with this service so b is wrong c is talking about uh, import the necessary lambda blueprint when creating the function there is no need for import so we will lock this answer so in this question you have an ec2 instance and on that instance an application resides and what you have to do is you want to keep us uh, keep us statistics about the program in cloudwatch you want to keep that statistics so what you have to do is if you go through option a option a b c and d when we are talking about cloudwatch we are talking about put metric data api call okay because that is what is required here to keep us statistics about the program so in this option c option c and d they are using cloudwatch put metric data api call so the answer has to be one of these so we eliminate a and b now let us look between c and d which one is right c is talking about you have to provide the required credentials to enable the api call and d is talking about you launch the ec2 instance with the iam role so this is the best practice you should always use a role you should not provide credentials or access keys directly you should do it via a role and hence d is the right answer this is correct remember cloudwatch is used to monitor the application what is happening in the application etc and if you want to monitor the metrics there are you have to use 
output metric data there are certain standard metrics like cpu ram storage etc is already tracked by cloudwatch so please subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you find this content interesting this brings us to the end of part 2 stay tuned for more such parts